Once again, I invite you to visit the sponsors of this video, PCB Way. Whether you're looking for the simplest of solutions, like I normally do, which is uh, prototyping boards, uh, you can get uh, 10 pieces of one to two layer for $5 with a 24 hour turnaround time. Very simple quoting system over here. Or whether you're looking for a full assembly package where they actually source your components for you, they're definitely the people to visit. So visit their website, the link's in the description below. Well, there you've just seen connecting a guitar, electric guitar, straight into the pickup input of a tube radio. In this case, the Grundig 4006, which I've just finished restoring. And the major flaw here, obviously, is this, me. I can't play guitar, all right? What I wanted to show you is that this thing works. It works very well. It actually works better than one would expect. However, it's dull. There's not much uh, control as far as uh, tone is concerned. You've got your normal tone control on the guitar and you've got the bass and the treble over there. That bass and treble, the frequencies at which it is set are basically, or which they have effect over, are basically for audio uh, played through the radio. And what you really want is to have some control on the sound coming out of the guitar. And we can resolve that issue. We've got another one, which is uh, the fact that your input impedance of the radio is basically, well, in this case, it's quite high, but it could be low. And the lower the input impedance is for a signal going from a guitar, the more high-end tone it will suck out of your uh, guitar sound. So we're going to look for a solution to that, and it's very simple. We're going to build an interface for guitar to tube radio. I've been wanting to do this for some time. I've got a couple of guitar amps, that's not a problem, but I've got a lot of tube radios. And I've always wanted to do this, and I'm gonna do that um, probably over a series, we'll see, from the simplest to fairly complicated. And when I say fairly complicated, I'll show you. This is a guitar pedal that I designed and built quite some time ago. At the time, um, I was into the guitar phase and we all go through that sometime, I guess. And um, I was fascinated by the changes of tone that you can achieve by putting a pedal between the guitar and the, the power amplifier. Now, the power amplifiers, guitar amps usually have a lot of uh, controls anyway, and um, they certainly would have some sort of uh, tone controls. But this thing is actually sort of a, um, it's, it's a pseudo preamp as it were. Let me explain. What happens here is you your guitar signal comes in here and it comes out there and it goes from there straight to the power amp input. Now what you're doing is you're actually um, modifying the, the sound before you plug it into the amp. Now a lot of the modification of the sound happens within the amp, but if you have say a clean amplifier and you want some crazy distortion or crazy effects one of the easiest ways to do that is actually with pedals, and there are hundreds of them, thousands of them. Everybody uh, always thinks they can come up with a better one. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they just copy somebody else. And quite frankly, as far as um, analog pedals are concerned, which this is one of them, there's not that much to basically invent. You're, uh, what you're doing is you're creating a buffer, buffering the input. There's also the possibility of uh, direct bypass, full bypass, which is I've 
I've got here where the signal just goes straight in and out. And then when you activate the pedal, I don't have the power on yet, um, you allow it to go through the preamp and then out the other end with all the goodness that you want to put into it, all the effects that you want to put into it. Now this one is pretty complex. It goes all the way from clean sound, if you put the gain on low, all the way to really crunchy, distorted sound if you put the gain, gain on high. And then of course you adjust the volume level, the actual level over here. You have various other controls. On this case you've got a bass, mid and treble tone control. So you can control three um, elements in the, or three levels, frequency levels within the, uh, the tone, within the frequency range. You get various types of tone controls. You get the Vox, the Marshall, the Fender, and then all sorts of other alterations that you can make on here. But basically it gives you quite a, uh, a defined control of your tone. This particular one has got two other things here, which is the switch. And what this does is it shifts the mid control um, down or up, depending on uh, what sort of effect I want to get. Quite honestly, this was built for somebody who knows how to play guitar and he knows how to play it very well. I built one for myself as well, obviously, this is it here. But um, they can do some wonderful things with this thing. And if you have a clean amplifier, one without all the bells and whistles, you can even use a hi-fi amplifier. You can actually modulate the tone before it gets into the amplifier. So the amplifier at the end is just a power amp, really. Now, my logic is if it works with a clean power amplifier, this idea will work very well with a tube radio because that's basically what we've got, a clean amplifier. And we can get all the sort of distortion and effects on a pedal or rather on an interface and then send it into the power amp. Now I'm not going to do one as complex as this to start, but I'm thinking of actually sort of building up on it till we get to the point where we have a full guitar preamp that we can use to adjust all sorts of things on here before we send it into the uh, tube radio. Oh, and by the way, this was neat. This is a friend of mine who designed our logo, the logo. Um, there was uh, another one that we did. I did this for uh, another couple of blads who've got a uh, metal band and they wanted a really heavy distortion pedal for <laughs> crazy, crazy metal. And this is the effect. We actually uh, had a competition where we asked guys to design a front panel and whoever did the best one, we gave them a free pedal. This is the design that won. And uh, a young guy ended up with one of these. He was very, very happy. So let me carry on and uh, show you what I have in mind. Here's a schematic of the first uh, attempt at this idea that I'm going to make. And um, if you understand any of the circuitry, it's pretty simple. What I have here is the uh, input jack. Forget about this for a second. Input jack, signal comes in. There's a ground reference, 2.2 meg resistor. There is a um, DC blocking capacitor here, 47 nanofarads, just to let enough uh, frequencies through. And then we've got a unity gain buffer. This is half of a TL072 op amp. You can use various types of op amps. For this experiment, I'm just going to use the TL072. And uh, that's connected to V+, which is your battery supply. And we'll talk about the supply in a second and ground. Now, this thing is uh, using just a... Uh, single-ended supply, it's not a plus and minus, so we need to have a uh, midpoint, in other words, a reference voltage, and that's where this VREF comes from. If you look at this as minus supply, plus supply, you can call that ground, for argument's sake, okay? But I'll describe that in a second. So um, input impedance of this is effectively 1 meg in parallel with 2.2 meg because the TL072 is a FET op amp, so it's very high input impedance. The signal comes in, there's no change to it, it just gets buffered, comes out at this end. And what we have here is, this is a very simple Fender tone stack, textbook uh, Fender tone stack without any modifications at this point. And um, what it'll do is allow you to control the three elements of the tone, namely the mids, the bass, and the treble. And you can do all sorts of amazing stuff with these capacitors and shift where your mids are. 
increase or decrease the extent of the base and the treble and so on. But for now, we'll keep this vanilla. It'll be stock simple and uh, we'll see what the result is and then we'll go and get braver later on. This signal comes out of your treble, goes into here, another ground reference of 1 meg, again connected to VREF, which I'll describe in a second, and it goes into a amplifier stage, the second half of the TL072, and this one has got some gain. Now, this gain is 1 plus that value divided by that value, so you can get a fair amount of gain. You can get some pretty decent distortion out of this, actually. So Let's see what happens. Now, the reason you need gain here, as well as a buffering effect, is that this thing doesn't... This is a passive tone control. And I suggest you look at Wikipedia and look at the uh, Fender Tone Stack. There's, there's a lot of description. Uh, quite a lot of uh, sites describe what the effects of this are. Some of them actually show you uh, graphically what happens when you adjust the various knobs and so on. We'll do that in a second stage when I want to get too more specific, but for now, I'll let, let you do some reading if you're interested. So this thing drops level. It doesn't add, it just cuts away. And because it cuts away, it means the signal coming out here has been attenuated relative to the signal that's coming through that unity gain buffer. So we've got to amplify it again. And we're not only amplifying it to the extent of what we've lost here, but we can actually go a bit further and really give it a bit of a boost over here. Anyway, it comes out here, so you basically got a volume control here, comes out here, another ground reference, and it goes out. Now this output will be your um, uh, the output that goes to the tube radio. And that's why we've got a, a DC blocking capacitor here. One thing I've got to note now is do not try this with uh, hot chassis radios. You need to be a little bit more careful. You can do it, but not this version. And I may talk about that in later versions as we go along. Putting this thing into a board layout, we'll have the results here. So this is what it looks like. I hope you can see that. We've got the input coming in here. We've got this section here, which basically creates a reference voltage, which is midpoint between the positive and the negative. I'll go back to the schematic and describe exactly what that does. Then this is all wired up to that uh, op amp and it comes out the output on that end. Now, this thing has got a switching function on here, which I will describe in a second in the schematic. And we are left with these three controls, bass, mid, and treble. You're seeing this in reverse because this is actually on the, on the lower side of the board so that when we fit it into a, an enclosure, the uh, pots stick out the back or the front, as it were. And we've got a level control. And as you can see, as far as wiring this up, it's one, two, three, four components that wire up with the, uh, with the three tone controls. As I said, the simplest, probably one of the simplest um, bass, mid, treble, uh, bass uh, tone controls you can get. So that's what we're going, what I'm going to produce. And then I'll be able to show you the results when the boards arrive. Just going back to the schematic here, what we've got is 9 volt battery. You can use whatever supply you want, but I'm using 9 volt battery. I want to use one on this one. The positive comes in here. This RC circuit is just to clean up any noise that comes through. So you're basically creating a small filter there to ground. And ground is deceptive here, but to ground. The uh, result then is a voltage which is slightly lower than 9 volts because the current that goes through here drops a little bit over here. Not much. The circuit does not draw much current. Then I've got a voltage divider here, 22K, 22K, and in the middle, we should get half V+. And I've called that VREF. And that is to enable us to use the op amps with a single supply. In other words, ground and positive. So VREF here, whenever I've got VREF on the circuit, that's what I've got. That's what I'm talking about. As for the ground, well, the negative of the battery, what we use here is a trick they use in most pedals which is if you use a stereo input uh, socket, now you know that guitars are generally mono, but if you use a stereo socket, what you do is you take the ground of the battery and you put it to the uh, ring, the center connector of your uh, socket, so that, and then you have the normal ground, which is the sleeve or the, uh, yeah, the sleeve of the socket. 
So when you plug in a mono connector, a mono plug, it shorts out these two, so it makes the ground connect. And you still have the same effect of ground and your signal. So that's a nice trick so that you don't have to have a switch on here and you don't waste battery. All you need to do is you just remove the uh, socket or the plug from the unit and your battery is now disconnected. So it works well, it works, it's worked well on thousands of pedals, no reason why it shouldn't work well here. In future iterations I may look at the uh, using a supply and a positive supply slash battery option, but as I said I want to make this as simple as possible and uh, get the ball rolling on this concept. As for the actual look of the board, this is what we're going to have on the one side, on the, well, it'll be the underside, but effectively the top side. I'm not going to worry about ground planes just yet. Uh, as I said, this is a prototype, so uh, we don't see much on this side. And on the other side, we have all the controls. Now, this is the side that's going to be facing you, so the pots are on this side of the board. And as you can see, you've got your bass, your mid, and your treble. And there's your level, whether it should be there or there, well, debatable. But that's what it's going to be for now. So I'm going to order these boards, and then I'm going to get back when the boards arrive, and we'll build it, and I'll show you the result. And uh, I encourage you to send some comments, questions, whatever you want to suggest for the next iterations, uh, by all means. And um, I hope you enjoy this, uh, this trip we're going on and uh, that you participate. Well, that's it for now, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Links at the end of the video. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.